I know what you're thinking. Is this guy actually going to pour an IPA into a stem glass? And the answer is yes. This is actually a proper tasting glass. It has laser etchings on the bottom of the glass to provide nucleation sites for your beer. In short, it refreshes the head and keeps the aromatic fresh throughout the entire glass. So in a way, this glass is kind of like me. It's tall, lanky, a little bit awkward, but believe it or not, is actually good at something. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and today we are taking a look at this beauty right next to me. This is the BenQ EX2780Q. It's a 27-inch 1440p that is aimed specifically at gamers. Let's back that up so I don't spill it. Now, BenQ, at least in my circle of friends, is really known for their professional panels. However, they have been making a name for themselves in the gaming market for the last couple of years. And this new flagship gaming monitor certainly has some specs worth boasting about. It's a 27-inch 1440p panel running at 144Hz with FreeSync and HDR400 support. Included in the box is a quick start guide, USB-C cable, an HDMI cable, which I am happy to report is a 2.0 cable this time around, and an infrared remote with a custom rubber stand. The display itself has a very sturdy stand that comes pre-attached and a very sleek and professional appearance, despite its gaming pedigree. It's almost a golden brown or bronze color, making it blend perfectly with the rest of my new studio. Sorry guys, the Edison lamp next to it is not included. One welcome feature is the volume dial built into the bottom left corner of the display. On the rear right, BenQ opted for the joystick menu control, which is definitely a favorite of mine. Between that and the included remote, there are plenty of ways to control the settings on the 2780Q, and they are all very intuitive. This review is going to focus primarily on the gaming performance of this panel, as BenQ advertises as being a flagship gaming monitor. My first impression out of the box was simply being impressed at the contrast and color saturation I was seeing at first boot, even on the Windows desktop. Colors were vivid, but very well balanced overall. A lot of gaming screens tend to focus a lot on contrast ratio, as having colors stand out from each other can give you a competitive advantage in games, allowing you to identify other players sooner. But a good number of gaming monitors also take the brightness a little bit too far, and end up washing out a lot of the white and gray elements. On the 2780Q, the panel is plenty bright, but those brighter elements are easily distinguished from one another. This was further backed up when I got into gameplay. The blacks were very dark, but still retained detail. The whites and yellows were very crisp, but not oversaturated. There is a very minor bit of haloing with white objects on a black background, but it is not the most egregious example of this I've ever seen, and honestly was not distracting from the image at all. So overall, I was very impressed with the color, contrast, and brightness of the EX2780Q, especially in games. There is one feature I didn't expect to be impressed by, and that's the speakers inside this monitor. While they're not going to win any awards for sound quality, they are definitely usable. They get plenty loud enough for gaming or watching movies at your desktop, and they're clear enough to hear most of the sounds in games. There is a bit of distortion when cranked all the way up, but they'll perform on par with just about any $20 set of speakers. If you already have a nice set of speakers or a soundbar, by all means use those, it's probably going to be better than these. But if you're primarily a headset gamer and don't want to bother with going out and buying a new set of $20 speakers, these will do the job when you don't want to put your headset on. Moving on to performance, let me just say that for the price point, this is one of the best experiences on a gaming monitor I've had. Obviously the 144Hz panel is incredibly smooth, but it's the color and contrast of this monitor that really impresses me at that $499 price point. I've seen better looking gaming screens with local zone dimming and HDR1400 nit, but I'm having a hard time thinking of a monitor I liked looking at more for less than $500. The EX2780Q does feature FreeSync, but unfortunately is not a G-Sync certified panel. But don't let that put you off. This is not only one of the best screens I've tested in a while when it comes to preventing screen tearing without adaptive sync enabled, it's also one of the best non-G-Sync certified screens I've tested. At 144Hz and beyond with FreeSync turned off, there is some tearing going on, but it is very minimal, and really not distracting at all in real time. In fact, it took some wild head swinging in-game and a slow motion camera to even cause any tearing at all. Turning on G-Sync over FreeSync completely eliminated what little tearing that was present, with no perceptible penalties to latency or performance. Both tearing and FreeSync performance were equally impressive across a wide range of frame rates. Performance was solid in games from the mid-40s in Red Dead Redemption 2 to well above 144 FPS in Doom. There is one spec on this monitor I am not a fan of, and it's the HDR400. 400. 400 nit brightness without local dimming on a display is just not enough to take advantage of HDR content, even if the spec technically meets minimum requirements. And in the case of the 2780Q, HDR gaming is pretty lackluster. 
Hellblades, the newest sacrifice, does support full HDR, and while the color and contrast performance of the monitor are already stellar in non-HDR content, it didn't seem to do much when enabled. In fact, to my eye, turning on HDR seemed to just dim the display down ever so slightly, causing me to actually lose contrast, with detail fallout very noticeable, especially in darker areas of the screen. Couple that with another issue when you're using NVIDIA cards. You can only enable G-Sync compatibility while using DisplayPort, and HDR is only supported over HDMI. So even if you wanted to enable HDR, you'll have to choose between one technology or the other depending on what cable you're using. AMD users will be able to activate FreeSync and HDR both over HDMI though. So even if you wanted to view HDR content, oh, well, I didn't break the glass. Well, reset the clock. Ticks me off because I was really enjoying this one. So even if you wanted to enable HDR, you'll have to decide between one or the other depending on which cable you're using. AMD users will be able to activate FreeSync and HDR both over the HDMI connection, however. But it's not all doom and gloom on the HDR side of things, as BenQ has a new feature on this monitor they're calling HDRI, or Intelligent HDR. This is not true HDR, but rather seeks to emulate different HDR profiles. And unlike the real HDR on this screen, HDRI is actually really impressive. There are three different modes, selectable from a key on the remote conveniently labeled HDRI. Now all three modes do darken the display a little bit, just like the standard HDR on this monitor, but not at the loss of any detail in the image, both light or dark. Game mode shows a bit of an increase in contrast and is the more mild of the three presets. Display and cinema modes both up the contrast even further, with cinema also increasing the color saturation as well, and is my personal favorite feature of this monitor. It's a difficult thing to capture on camera, but the color just feels more vivid and natural, but not overly so like some scenery modes on monitors tend to be. In fact, cinema mode looks incredible in games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Hellblade, providing that best-in-class experience I mentioned at the top of this video. Normally, I'm not a fan of the scene modes or fit color profiles, but in the case of HDRI, I'll make an exception. The BenQ EX2780Q is available today for $499, and certainly has the gaming chops to get a strong recommendation from me. It is not perfect, with HDR being a little lacking and some missing modern conveniences like a USB hub or a multi-axis adjustable stand. This one only does tilt. But it does deliver what it promises in games, with excellent frame rate and tearing performance, even better adaptive sync, and some of the best looking images I've seen in gaming at this price point. It is a monitor you should have on your shortlist to consider. If you'd like to pick up an EX2780Q for yourself, please think about visiting the Amazon link down in the video description below, and make sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing on your way down there. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys, and uh, sorry about spilling my beer. Today's beer is from Anchorage Brewing Company, I'm assuming in Anchorage, Alaska, although I didn't bother to look that up before I opened it. Uh, this is Lilith's Breath, or Lilith's Breath, I believe it's Lilith's Breath. It is a double IPA, 8.4%. Hey look, brewed and canned at Anchorage Brewing Company, Anchorage, Alaska. I was right. And there's not a lot of information on the beer on the can, so we're just going to go into this one blind, although I freaking love that can art. Oh my god, that is amazing. Boy, that is a different aroma for an IPA. It's very, very sweet. Um, and not like a malty sweet. You can still smell a lot of hops in there, but it's a very like red fruit sweet, like strawberries and cherries and raspberries. It's, uh, it's not a smell I'd normally associate with an IPA. Ooh, wow. Ooh, what is that? There are some things going on in this beer that I don't understand and I can't nail down. Like I said, it's a sweeter beer, uh, the, the nose especially, but oh man, that is just good. Um, maybe fig? Maybe a little bit of fig? Maybe? <laughs> like I said, it smells like, like a sweet red fruit. I want to say strawberry, but that's not the right thing. Um, but uh, the taste of it, it's almost a little bit... I want to say nutty with sweetness and maybe just a touch of citrus, but you still have that overlying hop flavor. Um, but there's nothing really dominant. But it just keeps changing on me. It's hard to nail down what flavor is actually in here. And if I don't start this video, I'm never going to get through it.
Okay, I'm starting to get some flavors out of this. It, it still reminds me very much of strawberry, but it's not strawberry. I wanna say if it was like strawberry rhubarb meets a Fig Newton with some hops on top. And that sounds like a disgusting combination, but quite honestly, it works. Um, I'm really curious to see what other people have said about this one because it is, it is unlike a lot of IPAs I've had before. Uh, the flavors are just a little bit otherworldly to me, but they all work very, very well together in this beer. I'm, I'm very impressed. Now there's a little bit of that New England style haze kind of coming up. This is certainly not a clear IPA, but uh, I'm getting a little bit of an acid burn right at the back of my throat. I know some people are a fan of that. This one, I'm not so much, um, but it is not distracting enough for me to not be enjoying this beer anymore. It is still wonderful. 